Hey guys, it's Nathan from the Kentucky Cycling YouTube channel. We are in Cumberland, Maryland at Canal Place where we're gonna ride the Gap Trail. The Great Allegheny Passage is a 150 mile long rail trail, which we've actually ridden previously. And for a beginner approaching this trail, I would certainly recommend riding it from Pittsburgh to Cumberland, namely because when you go from Pittsburgh up to the Continental Divide, you're actually climbing very gradually. And then you have a long descent from the Eastern Continental Divide all the way down into Cumberland. The first time we rode this trail, we approached it as a light credit card tour. So if you're interested in sort of dipping your feet into the touring scene, I would suggest you check out that video. It's actually one of the most popular videos we have on the channel. For this trip, we're going to approach it as a bike packing trip, but we're actually gonna fit this trip into a relatively short time period. We're arriving here uh, in Cumberland on a Thursday afternoon. We're going to ride uphill to Frostburg, Maryland, where we're going to stay at a private campground this evening. Uh, we're gonna go about 15 and a half miles or a little further, about 16 up to the campground today and do an overnight in Frostburg. Tomorrow we'll get up and we'll ride the remainder of the way up to the Eastern Continental Divide. And then we'll make our way through some really beautiful places like Confluence and Ohio Pile on into Connellsville. So we're gonna have a big day tomorrow, ride about 75 miles. We'll stay overnight at a free hiker biker site on the edge of town in Connellsville. And then on Saturday, we're gonna get up and we're gonna ride all the way into the Steel Valley into a downtown Pittsburgh. And then we're gonna stay overnight, or at least partly overnight, at a Airbnb in downtown Pittsburgh. We're gonna get up early, something new we've never done before, is we're gonna get up and we're gonna take the train, and we'll use the train as a way to get back from Pittsburgh back to Cumberland. So we'll board the train really early, like before 5 a.m., and then we'll be back in Cumberland Sunday morning about 9.30. So we're gonna fit this into in terms of riding time, maybe two and a quarter, and then uh, total trip, we're going from Thursday through Sunday where we can get up uh, basically from Central Kentucky here to Cumberland and then back again. Uh, so really looking forward to returning and viewing uh, the awesome scenery along this trail. I'm appreciating a lot of the um, infrastructure as well. I uh, can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to. It's been about four and a half years. and I feel like we are long overdue. It's time to go ride the Gap Trail. Come along. and two and a half miles out of town and the gravel begins. Oh, it's a very fine, hard packed, crushed limestone. to go long on the gap before you get some gorgeous views. Check this out. Upon reaching Frostburg, we slowly made our way up the series of switchbacks to trail in lodging and campground, where we then pushed our bikes up a series of ramps up to the campground. After setting up our tents, we walked up to downtown Frostburg where we got dinner, after which we returned and enjoyed some time around the fire before bed. The next morning, we all grabbed showers at the campground before getting back on the trail. 
Trail Inn advertises a cafe, but it was not up and running at 8 a.m. the next morning, so we had snacks from our bag before riding back down to the trail and continuing our journey uphill towards the Eastern Continental Divide. Guys, we are in Myersdale, and we bumped into some Kentucky cyclists on the trail from E-Town. This is Guy and Elaine. Just tell us a little about where you're headed. From here, we're headed to D.C., then to Richmond, and ultimately Yorktown, Virginia. And where did you come from? We started in Berea, Kentucky. Very good. And so you guys came up U.S. Bike Route 21? Yep. Tell us about how you got to here. Well, we cut over to Little Miami okay. at Milford and went up uh, to Xenia Station. We actually detoured to Dayton and spent some time with our son. And then we cut back and did, what was it, part of the Ohio to Erie yep, Trail. To which Columbus. Camp Chase. And then from Columbus, <laughs> from so Columbus we went, uh, went to Zanesdale and then to Wheeling and took the Wheeling Heritage Trail up to Weirton. Weirton, we caught the Panhandle Trail and uh, what's, what's Montour. the Montour Trail that kind of skirts uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. And uh, then we caught the gap in McKeesport. I think a lot of what you did is a lot, a part of the vision of like the great American Rail Trail. You're utilizing, you know, right. parts of that. Right. So you guys are the real deal. And I understand that this is like a completion of your Trans American trip that you started previously and got interrupted. Yeah. Great to see Kentucky cyclists out here and uh, have a safe rest of your trip. Thank you. Y'all did the same.
spent the second night on the trail in Connellsville and stayed at the free hiker biker campsite on the north end of town, which is located next to the Connellsville Gateway Arch. With lots of rain in the forecast, we were grateful to be able to stay in the Adirondack shelters and found that despite the fact that the shelters are open on one side, we didn't have any problem staying dry, even without setting up our tents. There is also water and a pit toilet. The site is positioned at the rear of a shopping center with a grocery store and pizza place and is only about a half mile from downtown with more dining options. Our final day on the Gap would be a wet one, marked by periods of steady rain. It felt very reminiscent of the bikepacking trip we did on the Katy Trail, especially given the change in the riding conditions. It should be noted that crushed limestone packs down hard and is almost pavement-like in dry conditions, but in wet conditions, the trail becomes sandy and almost beach-like. I often get asked about tire width size recommendations for trails like this and whether or not it could be ridden on a road bike. In dry conditions, the answer is yes. But given that the weather can be a bit unpredictable, I'd recommend at least a 35 millimeter wide tire for this trail. The narrowest tire width in our group was 38 millimeters and the widest being 2.1 inches. In West Newton, we stopped off for a short break at the West Newton Bicycle Shop which not only afforded the opportunity to catch a break from the rain, but also warmed our spirits. With a former BMX racer in our group, we wanted to make sure he got to see their very impressive collection of vintage BMX bikes, which we all enjoyed. After making our way to our Airbnb, getting checked in and getting showers, 
We had fun exploring downtown Pittsburgh, which included a very tasty dinner with excellent service at Forbes Tavern, after which we turned in early ahead of our early morning train ride. At 4.30 a.m. the next morning, we rode through the streets of downtown Pittsburgh to the Amtrak station, where we were directed to remove all bags that weren't attached to the center frame on our bikes in preparation for checking the bikes into a cargo car. Soon after the train arrived, we were escorted ahead of the rest of the passengers to hand off our bikes before carrying the rest of our gear onto the train with us. Despite these few extra steps, we really enjoyed returning to Cumberland this way. The passenger space was super comfortable. We were able to get breakfast on the train, and we especially enjoyed that the Amtrak followed along the opposite side of the rivers from the Gap for the majority of the trip, so we were able to follow our location using Google Maps on one of our phones and get glimpses of various points along the trail that we had ridden through. And we arrived back in Cumberland in plenty of time to get loaded up and drive home to Kentucky before dinner. All in all, this was a great way to experience the Gap Trail and one that I would wholeheartedly recommend to others. As always, we hope you found this content useful. If you did, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks.